reason. So there are some guidelines I'd like to introduce. Pseudocode you may consider as a simple English-like statement. And then uh, each statement is written on a separate line. You may consider each statement as each instruction to your computer program. Then it's easier to have certain indents between keywords. For example, one instruction may have uh, sub-instructions belongs to main instruction. So you may like to uh, have one main instruction instruction or statement that consists with uh, two sub-statements. That two sub-statements you may like to indent. Next one is um, to top to bottom for statement. So if you have multiple statements, you may rewrite it um, like a several statements. For example, add three numbers, we can write input statement, process statement, output statement separately. Last one will be a bit more complicated. Uh, you may deal with uh, certain conditions so that you may need to group them together. You may have you may have to deal with the repetitions. It means you may need to consider grouping certain statements together as a subroutine. Okay, let me just write it, uh, program design. Components consist with input process output. And then let me uh, say a set of written instructions that will be performed by a computer. Okay, those are guidelines. Let me focus on uh, basic operations. I will write it down six basic operations here. Or I will say um, most common basic com uh, operations by software or computer program. The first one is um, receiving information. So I will say a computer can receive information. You may consider as an input components of program design. Second one is put out information. You may consider as a third components of program design. Consider output. Next one, I will say uh, perform arithmetic or mathematic calculations. Next one, assign a value to um, certain memory location. The location we can refer to as a variable.
Next one, we may compare two variables so that we can deal with uh, uh, certain conditions so that we can make a decision one out of two alternative instructions or actions. For example, uh, variable A is 10, variable B is 20. Then we know that um, A is smaller than B. We like to know that that statement is whether it's true or not. So that's what we call it as a conditional statement. Here, repeat a group of instruction. That means there are certain things we can group them together. Then we can repeat several times with uh, certain conditions or until we meet the certain conditions. Okay, first phasing operation here reports to input. So we use the keywords called from, sorry, lead from a record on a file or we can get input prop keyboard. So let me deal with the first one. The keyword lead is used, open used. When you're dealing with the input from a storage device, usually the storage device have multiple files you may need to uh, read certain records. For example, a student record may consist with the student number, first name, last name, and so on. So we are reporting to that particular instructions to read student record from student's file. Next one is a get. Um, Sometimes we need to provide information to um, our computer program. So we are maybe waiting for uh, input. From the user, user may provide input by typing maybe student number or new student number. And the uh, new student record include first name and last name. So example here I will say read student name. Normally it's better to separate the statement. So next statement I will say read student number. So that also we can uh, get student name, then get student number, provided by uh, end user. It means I may type the new student number and the name as a new student record. So there is a bit of a difference between lead and get keywords or uh, when you use a pseudo code. Okay, ne next one is put out information. It is with uh, uh, output of uh, program design components. Sometimes we say uh, provide information to our device. Again, most popular keywords is print, also write, then put, 
output display so print may refers to um, supply information to the printer Right open refers to supply information to storage device, for example, file. Okay, put to supply information to the uh, output. Uh, device like a monitor screen console depends on what you call it actually put up or display reports the exactly same thing or well, the meaning is interchangeable so let me just copy paste it so it's your preference. I often use output as my uh, preference rather than put display. Okay, let me go through um, uh, two, three examples. For example, print keywords. Um, you may like to print a label on your paper. So we say uh, print um, student name. Usually more than one character, I like to use a double quotation. If you have a single character, you may like to use the single quotation. Okay, here we say uh, print student name to the printer. So if you have a paper size paper, we just print student name without quotation. We can also say write student name. You can consider student name um, as a variable. It's a holding student um, record, for example, John Smith. Um, I think instead of put it there, let me just go up and I will say um, output and work in progress. Okay, the main idea is um, before you print to um, <coughs> student name to file storage device, um, instead of leaving your screen blank, you may like to have uh, some sort of message say work in progress. Okay, last one I may use um, output. Say output, for example, uh, student name. As a label on my screen. Then I may print output. 
um, student actual name, John Smith. Then maybe student age, 20 years old. Then gender, and for male. So once you have a program, uh, this is how it looks like. It will print a student name on your console as a label. Next line, it will print uh, John Smith. That considers the second line. Then it will print numeric value 20 as a an H and then character value M. So there will be four lines of outputs on your console. Okay, next page operation is uh, performing arithmetic or mathematic operations. Okay, now before then, let me just say um, this information considers input. Components of program design. And uh, put out information consider as um, output components of uh, program design. Okay, let's get back to um, the basic operation three: perform arithmetic or mathematic uh, mathematical calculation. So I'm going to cover only basic things here. Again, here I'm not using any um, for customized formulas. And uh, any mathematical formulas, you should be able to use it. But let me just stay with the very basic uh, operations like uh, additions, subtractions, uh, multiplications, and divisions. Add maybe refers to as add uh, a value. For example, you may say uh, add 10 to variable A or add 20 to H variable. Next one is subtract to subtract A value. For example, uh, subtract 20 from variable C. Um, next one is multiply to multiply value. Like a ten percent tax, you can uh, multiply uh, the pro product price by ten percent, so one point one. The last one is divisions to divide by a certain value. Normally we use the symbols like a plus symbol if you look at keep a numeric keypad minus multiplications then uh, divisions. Again uh, it's different from mathematic uh, symbol. This looks like a slash, okay? Also, we can use a parenthesis. So that we may um, not to follow ordinary uh, the precedence of uh, addition and multiplications. Usually, we have to do multiplications before the addition subtractions. 
So first example, 10 plus maybe 10. Everything is pretty much this report. Okay. I got subtract multiple and divide. So I will jump to the last one. Here, um, 10 plus 10 multiplied by 10. So with our parents, this is usually do 10 multiplied by 10. So 100 plus 10. So it's going to give us 110. Uh, if you want to do addition first, 20 by 10 is going to give you um, 200. So you may like to use a uh, parenthesis here. Next, assign value to um, uh, variable is the most common things. Instead of using values directly, we um, like to assign certain values to multiple variables. Then we are using those variables to the calculations. So you can consider this is uh, all process components of a program design. Again, uh, most common and uh, we may refer to as a memory locations. So variable A may be located to uh, certain memory locations. Variable B also located in uh, certain memory locations. Uh, that's the main idea of uh, LAM, random access memory. So it means that uh, whenever you write certain values to variable, it may refer to the same locations. When you um, use something else, if you use a different variable, delete it, and use it again, uh, it may locate to different location, but with the same variable name. So we use the name called assign as a reason word. Or you can use the symbol. This looks like equal sign. We read it as a sign operator. And the part of the uh, input components, we may like to set a default value. Or we may like to initialize certain variable. We also like to save or store. as a, a output components of program design. So assign a, a value to variable can be used input process output components of a program design. Uh, initialize actually considers the same as a set, so let me move up. Okay, um, so I'll give you an example. We can say a equal to 10, or we say uh, we assign number 10 to a variable, we assign 20 to a variable called b, assign um, 10 to a, actually um, I'm assigning a variable to the memory locations with the value 10. Assign B to memory location for yeah, the numeric value 20. Again, um, so A equal to 20, B equal to 20. Okay. Say A to, this is actually a specific values like A equal to 10, A equal to 20. Set A to 10, uh, so, sorry, set A to 0, or initialize A, B to 0 means 
we um, going to allocate the variable A and B with the default value 0 in uh, our memory location. Uh, last one is more readable. We can say uh, get a user age. Then we can save the user's input into certain uh, variable. So may I will say uh, save user's input into uh, age variable. Or if you prefer, you can say save age to um, age variable. Sounds a bit funny. So I try to use more generic names here, or general names. Save the user's input into age variable. Then I may have uh, input which is not part of this demonstration, but it's make it clear. So the user's input reports to here, get user age. That is the, um, the user's input age. I guess this is clear. Okay, the user age reports the user's input. Okay, next one, uh, number five, we are going to deal with um, comparing two variables um, so that we can choose one of the two alternate, alternative instructions. Or with certain conditions, we may take certain actions. This is what we call as a um, conditional statement. The first one, I will say, um, if then and and if statement. Then uh, next one is if then else and if statement. So first one say uh, if condition is true, we do certain things. If it's not, we don't care. Again, uh, it means if student is part-time add number one to part-time counter. If not, we don't count. So here we say if student is part-time, then add one to part-time count. And uh, here I make clear if then and if. Okay, I may put it into two statement. So if goes together with then and if goes to um, second line. Again, okay? I'll say if then else and deep. That should be um, usually next line. So try to make it clear again. Okay? Usually it consists with two statement. It consists with uh, three statement again. Okay? Here I will say and deep. That means end of uh, if conditional statement. That refers to student is part time. So what if we want to deal with a student who is not a part-time? Are we going to take a certain action or not? 
So if student is not a part-time, we may assume that student is full-time. So we will still count as a full-time student. In that case, we may use if, then, else. Then we end with uh, end if. So we are looking at uh, two different conditions. If it's not true, it means if student is not true, sorry, if student is not part-time, then we are referring to else statement. So end if. So no matter what if, then end if, or if, then else, end if, we are looking at only uh, one conditional statement. For example, is student part-time? Then here, if student is part-time, we take action A2, add 1 to part-time. If condition is not, we take a different action, add to full-time count. So let me make it clear here with only one conditional statement. Example is uh, student part-time. So the first case, if this part-time is true, then we add one to part-time count variable. Second, if then else and if statements, we also take action even though it's not true. We go to else statement saying add one to full-time count variable. So next one, I will deal with uh, what if. We have uh, two conditional statements. So we are not looking at um, student part-time. What if we are looking at male or female part-time students? So we may stay with one. Let's say is a male student part-time. So let me copy that statement. Here, what we are looking at is um, logical operator and. So we are looking at a uh, male student also part time. So here is a part time and male. We assume that we can uh, get the value for part-time and male, whether it's true or false. So let me change the variable name called male part-time count. So if those two conditions are true, then I will add one to male part-time count variable. Again, if you want to take action, if that condition is not true, we assume that um, that is full-time uh, students happen to be female. So say female full-time students. There will be many different conditions, but uh, again, I'm going to use OR logical operator. So if we say part-time or male. So next one, yes, it can be true. Again, uh, not a very good example, but here um, just demonstration of uh, using two variables to compare whether one of them is true. Either student is part-time or male. So here I will say uh, male part-time count. Actually here it can be um, female part-time 
or it can be male students full time. But again, uh, simplicity, I will just ignore those uh, statements. So if it's not true, then female full time counts. So what I'm talking about here is logical operators. So you may be able to compare uh, more than one conditions. Let's say two conditions. What we call as and, and then the other one is or. As long as one is true, then you go to next statement. And the operator means both conditions should be true. Otherwise, it's false. We also have uh, relational operators, such as um, less than, greater than. We lead left to right hand side. So greater than equal to same symbol as a assignment operator. Again, left to right hand side. Less than or equal to greater than or equal to not equal to Please watch the symbol. It looks like um, um, less than and greater than. That's what we call as not equal to. So let me use if then else. Sorry, if then and if. If A greater than B, then I will print it out one statement. So I will use output keywords. So with quotation mark here, A is greater than B. Otherwise, I won't do anything, so I will just say end if. Again, this statement is it's difficult to evaluate. Actually, you cannot evaluate it unless you assign the value at the beginning. So set A to 10, set B to 20. So I actually prefer to say A equal to 10, B equal to 20. Or you say, uh, say A to 10, set B to 20. Uh, if you follow the pseudo code. I will copy the same thing. Paste it. This time I will try to use if then else. And if statement, it means if it's true, I will take a certain action. If it's not true, also I will take the actions. So if it's true, output A is greater than B, else. If it's not true, which reports to else, output A is less than B. That's what I'm going to print on my console. Next one is uh, repeating or group of instructions. We are going to look at do while and do statement. So you uh, you ask your 
program to do certain things as long as condition is true that refers to y so here is the example we put a condition after y then um, after next y statement uh, we may put the uh, do so here uh, do y students total less than 10 let's say each class has only 10 students as a program read the student name then as a program print student name then we add one to student total we assume the student total start with zero so we continue um, the student total become number one still less than ten so we continue need student number print student name add one to student total become two two is still less than ten we continue so when student total less than um, let's say is 10 10 is less than 10 is not true so we go outside and do so we repeat the 10 times there's something called y do and y so we put the condition after y and then we do certain things after do syntax looks quite similar so y student total less than 10 to following statement which is the same read the student name print the student name add to student total then end y It works exactly the same. Uh, difference between do while and do, and then while do and why, is the first do while and do guarantee that whether its condition is true or not, it will go through do statement at least once. It means it's going to read the student name, print the student name, add one to student total at least once. Again, here's the one minor issue. Um, normally, any repetitions, we like to make sure um, the control variable called student total should be initialized. Let's say uh, student total to zero. So we know that we start from zero. Um, what if the student num total is actually 11 at the beginning? Then uh, do while and do, no matter what it will do, means it's going to read the student name, print the student name, and add 1 to student total, so become 12. On the other hand, if you look at uh, while do and while, it's going to evaluate the um, conditions student total is equal to 11 which is less th which is not less than 10 so it's not going to do anything it's just going to go outside do while it means that uh, do while and do guarantee is going to do certain things at least once while do and while it doesn't Again, um, I'm going to repeat the same example as an overview of uh, pseudocode. So those who already watched the previous video clips, you can stop. So here is the statement again, a problem statement. I'm going to write it uh, as a full sentence. 
program is required to read three numbers and and um, sorry add them together and print sum so you may need to consider uh, in terms of program design input process output let me fix that um, add them together so you should be able to identify what is a process uh, let me just copy the same name as it is add them together output we are looking at uh, print their sum so you can identify the um, specific keywords you can say uh, them reports to three numbers their sum print uh, sum of three numbers this is a kind of uh, a similar idea of uh, looking at business statement you should be able to interpret according to uh, program design requirements so you should be able to identify input process output components usually input is a straightforward output is a straightforward the process is maybe not clear sometimes especially if you have to come up with your own formulas So let me write it down um, solution algorithm using um, pseudocode. So every pseudocode we start with a program name. So I will use add three numbers with a space. So I will replace space with the underscore. It's good idea to say end, then you can fill in the gap. So think about input. It says uh, required to read three numbers, so we use the same read three numbers. Process add them together. So I will say add three numbers. the output print sum okay now this is a strip of good enough pseudocode or you can come up with a, a, a bit more specific for example here three numbers instead of say three numbers you can specify as a lead number one, lead number two, lead number three. So you can end up with a three um, statement for input, or you can just say lead number one, comma number two, comma number three with a single statement for input. okay and the uh, process if you uh, if you are familiar with the uh, operator you can say sum equal number one plus number two plus number three then the result you can assign to variable called sum then you can print sum so this is actually a lot more uh, likely computer program but once you get used with it, uh, you may prefer to use second uh, solution algorithm using pseudocode than the first pseudocode. So let me quickly go through uh, program design. We look at input process output. Um, we are looking at the pseudocode. There are certain guidelines. And um, you can use English like statements. You may need to indent. 
so that it will be a lot easier to read. Then we also have a uh, uh, output, and uh, if you look at here, sequential order. So I put it in a single statement, each line, and then some of them I can group them together. For example, here, uh, list information, print provide information. Um, I did not group them together. The calculation here, then uh, assign. Yeah, um, if you look at here, operators, you should get used with it, especially divisions. Then uh, parentheses is up to you if you want to not to follow the precedence. And then assign values to um, variable, you know, memory locations. Again, uh, be careful, uh, a equal to 10 means we assign memory location to variable a, then uh, we assign number 2 to the memory locations, which is uh, variable a to 10. Usernames, again, same story here, save and store. Next one are uh, conditional statements. If you have one condition, um, it's uh, easy to deal with. It. If it's true, you may need to do certain things. Or uh, you may um, design the program to take action. Even though it's not true, you want to take, your, you make sure your program take action, then you may need to use if, then, else, and if statement. So something like this one here, student is part time, then you have a statement to to make sure if it's not true, you still need to take action. Also you may use a two conditional statement using and or logical operators. You can also use relational operators. So if you have a variables, you may compare the actual value inside the variable. Be careful about not equal to. If a is greater than b, then uh, output is greater than b. Uh, always watch when you're dealing with a conditional statement. Initial value is important. Okay. Repetitions. Again, almost identical to while and then while do. But it's guarantee to while will guarantee whether the condition is true or not. It will do. That's why we call do while. While do means if 